What is going on lads and welcome back to another squad builder. This time I am bringing you the future England team or at least what I think will be the future England team anyway. So in five or six years when most of the current senior professionals have retired and stopped playing international football, stopped playing at the top of their game, these are the boys that are going to be representing our country and hopefully they can do considerably better than the current ones are doing. Now just a little disclaimer just before we get into it, first of all I just built a team out of the crop of players that I think will be playing. So just because these are the players are on the pitch and some of them are on the bench doesn't necessarily mean that I think they're going to be the star in 11 and they're going to be the bench. I just picked some players that I fancied using in FIFA to get some clips and built the team out of them. So obviously some of the players on the bench could be at the starting team and some of the players in the team could be on the bench and stuff like that. It's just the team that I fancy playing with. Also, if you are looking to buy, build some nice and expensive teams, like this one is going to end up pretty expensive, make sure you get your coins from Ultimate Team Coin Traders. Their link is in the description. A nice, reliable way to get you your coins. Now, let's go down to the bench and have a look at the players that we've got. The first one is going to be Luke Shaw. Now, this boy plays for Southampton, who tend to have a very good youth crop, actually. I think Walcott and Bale both came from there as well, didn't they? And this guy is 17 and tipped to be one of the best left-backs that England has ever seen. At the moment, obviously, Ashley Cole and Leighton Baines are the two first-choice left-backs. Personally, I think it should be Baines, but in the future, it is going to be this guy that is going to be racking up the appearances for England, apparently. Or so they say, anyway, if he keeps developing the way that he does. Next up, we have got Jenkinson. Now, it says he plays for Finland on FIFA, but that is incorrect. He has got the Finnish flag, but I think he's played for all of the England youth teams, if I'm not incorrect. So, I don't know why it's like that. Maybe he played for the Finnish under-21s or something like that, but he has said that he wants to play for England. And to be honest, he gets criticised a little bit, but he is actually a quality player when he plays. And, of course, he is only very, very young, so you can't criticise him too much. He has done a pretty decent job for Arsenal when he's been playing instead of Bakary Sanya when Sanya was injured. He's only about 20 or 21, and he had Iron Robin in his back pocket, so he can't be doing too much wrong, and he is possibly going to be probably going to be the substitute right back actually when we get into the team the one that is in the team is probably going to be the one that will start on current performances but you never know next up we have got someone who's already playing for england actually but he is only extremely young he's 19 years old and it is alex oxlade chamberlain he's already on the front cover of fifa he's already playing for england he's already playing for arsenal regularly so he's a top quality player and of course he is going to be in the england team for a long long time to come only being 19 years old so it's probably going to be one of the starting players in the future, but I just fancy trying out a different left wing that was up there. So that's the only reason that he is on the bench. Same goes for Ross Barkley, really. He's widely regarded as one of the top English talents, so he's probably going to be a starter for England in the centre forward or centre midfield role. But again, I've used him before and I just wanted to try out a couple of other players. He's a quality player. He started to break into the Everton team a lot more. Again, he's only 19, so he's extremely young. He's a local lad to Everton, which is pretty good, staying loyal to his club and stuff like that. So hopefully he'll be an absolutely quality player for England, as he's proven that he probably can be for Everton. He's got a massive work rate, so such a good lad. He reminds me a little bit of James Miller, that type of player, but maybe with a little bit more talent, hopefully. So let's move on. And next up, we have got Chris Small. This guy is slightly older than all the other players. He's actually 23 at the moment, so he's probably going to be, in a few years, one of the more senior professionals that are in the team. But there is a couple of them that are all the same age at centre-back, so there is going to be competition for that place. So I've just put Small on the bench, and we've got the other two at centre-back who are all around the same age and going to be more, some of the more senior pro players in the team once the likes of Gary Cahill and Ferdinand and people like that do eventually drop out. Next up we've got Jake Livermore, again one of the slightly older players, probably going to be one of the more senior pros or mightn't quite get a game, you never know. He is still only a silver and he is 23 so the way Smalling is slightly older, he is actually slightly better rated. So if you're going on FIFA then maybe you won't get into the team, maybe he's going to be a bit of a bench warmer but maybe he just turns good and he's going to be one of the slightly more senior pros in the squad. Next, we've got one of the apparent wonder kids, and that is Thomas Ince. This guy has actually had things thrown around that he might be worth 25 million by the Blackpool manager and stuff like that. So this is absolutely ridiculous. The guy's 21, and he's just gone absolutely storming it through the championship this year. So he's a quality, quality player, and likelihood is he is going to be one of the top England players in a few years to come. Or well, that's the way they're talking about him anyway, and a lot of the big clubs are meant to be interested in, in him. Now, again... We've got another left back and Kieran Gibbs is considerably older than Luke Shaw and he's also slightly older than the guy who was in the starting 11 as well. So unless he proves to be absolutely insane, by the time Ashley Cole and Leighton Baines are gone, which is going to be another couple of years, this guy will be into his prime and maybe he will get to play, but you never know. Shaw and the guy we've got at left back might have picked up the game as well and they'll go for the slightly younger talent. 
So this guy's in the reserves. Whether he'll actually ever make it properly into the England team remains to be seen. But all in all, he's a pretty decent player. And he's quite good on FIFA as well. So I'd recommend you picking him up as he is nice and cheap. Lastly, we have got a player that I actually forgot to put into the original team. So he is a right wing. And let's knock this onto England just so we can pick him up. And it is Theo Walcott. Now, this guy has been around for absolutely ages it's ridiculous how long he's been playing like premiership top level football and he's only 23 so he's got loads more room left for growing and he's probably going to be one of the regular england players one of the more senior players he's already been to the world cup he's one the youngest english player to go to the world cup i think so anyway correct me if i'm wrong in the comments but this guy is probably going to be one of the starters and hopefully he keeps getting better he has picked up his game a lot more recently for arsenal so this guy probably should have been in the team but i just wanted to try someone else else as i out else out as i have used walcott before now, let's move on to the squad, and in goal, we have got Jack Butland. Now, you could see Joe Hart there, who's still got quite a lot of years left in him. He's not too old himself, but eventually Hart is going to have to step down, and this is going to be the guy that's going to step up. He's got a nice little smirk on his face there, as if to say, yeah, I'm going to be the next England keeper, and he is a quality, quality player. He's pretty decent on FIFA, and for a silver goalkeeper, that is, anyway. And he's already been to the Olympics for Great Britain. I think he went to Euro 2012 as well. So he's not doing a bad little job for himself already. Widely regarded as one of the best English keepers that there is going around at the moment. Obviously, apart from Joe Hart. So it's more than likely that this guy is going to be the one who is playing. At centre-back, the first one that we have got is Phil Jones. Now, this guy is 20, 21 years old. So he's slightly older. Than, he's slightly younger sorry, than Chris Small, and so he's more than likely to be the one that is going to be playing for the team. He already starts for Manchester United, which is an achievement in itself. I'm not too sure if he's been capped for England yet, but he is a quality player all the same. And he's, actually, he's pretty decent on FIFA, and he's only non-rare as well, so he's the same rating as Small is, but he's slightly younger, so I've gone with him as being the one who's probably going to get the starting position. Although, like I said, this isn't too serious about who's the starters and who's the bench, so we've just got three really decent young centre-backs that are going to be top quality players for England in the future, hopefully. Again, we've got another 21-year-old centre-back, and this time it is going to be Stephen Corker. Now, this guy is a god on FIFA. He's absolutely unreal, and he's quality in real life. He's been running the show for Tottenham as of recent. Started playing a lot more anyway. So, he's a quality player. Maybe make some mistakes and stuff like that. Tottenham fans will probably point out to me. But, all in all, he's only 21, and he's going to grow into what should be an absolutely quality player. He's really fast and really strong. So, as long as he gets his brain down to it and picks up the mental aspects of the game, he will turn out to be an incredible centre-back for England. And like I said, between him, Jones and Smallham, we should have a pretty decent centre defence, um, central defence, so not too bad as it goes for England there. At right back as well, we should have a top quality player. This guy maybe isn't the best at defending, but he's awesome at getting forward, and it is Kyle Walker. Now, he's 22, I want to say, maybe 23, I'm not too sure. So, he's still pretty young, and he probably should be the England right back at the moment, to be honest as well. I'm not a biggest fan of Glenn Johnson, so I will pick this guy ahead of him. I think Walker's got a lot more to offer going forward, even though he mightn't be as defensive at the back. But he will learn, as he gets older, to how to read the game and be a lot more defensive. So, hopefully we're going to have a pretty solid England defence in the future. And it's going to be rounded off, I think, by Ryan Bertrand. Regarded playing for Chelsea, played in the Champions League final, did he, or the Champions League semi-final last year or something ridiculous like that when he is only about 23 so he's slightly older than the players but still not too old at all and like I said between him and Gibbs it's going to be for the Spartan position I can see it going to Bertrand myself I know I said that Gibbs is slightly older than him but I did get that wrong they are the same age and then there's Luke Shaw is probably going to deputize one of the two of them so whichever one that goes to will remain to be seen but in my opinion it is probably going to go to Bertrand so now let's move on to the center midfields and the first one that we have got is going to be a silver and it's going to be Nick Powell who's recently signed to Manchester United and he's recently been added into FIFA as well so he's quite expensive on FIFA. He was absolute god last year. He dominated League 2 for crew. Scored some absolutely ridiculous goals. Scored an absolute screaming at Wembley and if he's good enough for Alex Ferguson to buy then he's good enough for me because I highly regard Alex Ferguson as one of the best managers in the world. Some of you might slate me for that. Say that you hate Man United and stuff like that but he's an absolute genius so if he buys this guy then there must be something to him and he must be a quality player. So let's move over into the next centre midfield and this time we have got Tom Cleverley. I think Cleverley is actually the oldest player in the team. He is born in 89 which makes him 24 or 23 
I think it does yet. So there you go. And he is a pretty decent informal on FIFA. He's really cheap. He looks like a cross between Rossi HD and TJD FIFA, actually. But this is the guy who has been playing absolutely incredibly for Manchester United this season. In playing centre mid for the league champions, is obviously you've got to be some. And you've just got to be a quality player, basically, to put it simply. And he's nice and young, so when the likes of Gerard, Lampard and Scott Parker move on, this is the guy that's hopefully going to come up and take up that defensive midfielder role, because next to him, we have got arguably the best player in the team and arguably one of the best young talents in the world at the moment, and that is Jack Wilshere. Now, this boy is only 21, and the way he plays football and reads the game, plays the passes, stuff like that, is just absolutely unreal to me. He is probably the best player in this team in real life, I would say, anyway. He's absolutely unreal, and he's going to be probably the captain for England, and the guy who's just call, calling all the shots, and the best player in the team, the way that it's going, anyway. So, this guy is the one to watch from this squad, who is going to be England's next superstar, I feel. At right wing, we've got another player. We've got quite a lot of Manchester United players in this team. And technically, Wilfried Zaha is also a Manchester United player, although we got lent back to Crystal Palace for the season. But again, another young, top-quality talent picked up by Alex Ferguson, so there must be something there. So hopefully he's going to be developed into a top-quality right winger. Maybe he won't get a game because of Theo Walcott, but we'll have to see how Zaha and Walcott develop, whether Walcott keeps pushing forward and whether Zaha can catch him up, as I think he is quite a lot younger than him. He's only 20. 19 or 20 whereas Walcott's like 23 now so we'll have to see he's got Walcott's got a couple of years head start on him so we'll just have to play it by ear with the way that one goes finally our other left wing and our striker we've got Raheem Sterling at left wing so like I said Oxley Chamberlain's probably going to take this position but I just fancy playing with Raheem Sterling really he is the youngest player in this team I think along with Shaw he's only 17 I'm pretty sure he is anyway he's maybe hasn't got the attitude to make it which is why it questions me as to whether he'll actually make it into the team properly or whether he'll be deputizing to Oxley Chamberlain he's been a bit of a dick basically and thinks a lot of himself and has got a massive ego which you can understand he's a 17 year old who is tipped as the next one of the next best England players, one of the, the English Neymar and all stuff like that. So he's quality on FIFA. He's really expensive. He cost me like 150k, but he is a decent player and hopefully he's going to mature into a slightly better professional and a slightly more reserved professional and goes about his business a lot better and turns into a much more quality player, a much nicer guy. More importantly, now finishing off the team, we have got informed Danny Welbeck again. Walcott could take this place as he isn't wanting to play up front. He keeps telling Arsene Wenger. And when he has played there, he's done an actually pretty decent job. Rooney is currently England's first choice striker. And he has got quite a few years left Years left in him now. He is only 26, but eventually he's going to have to drop out. And in will come Danny Welbeck, who's already playing quite a lot for England. He scored that nice little back heel flick the other game when he played. So he's a pretty decent player. He is 23, I think, at the moment. 22 or 23. So he's a little bit of one of the older players in this team and going to be one of the more senior players. But he is still quality and hopefully he's going to become a top quality England striker. Rooney's never really performed on the international stage. So hopefully this boy will. So, lads, that is the squad. Like I said, don't take anything serious about the positions and stuff like that. Obviously, the, the England team might not play 4-3-3 and some of the players on the bench might start and F stuff like that so this is just the team that I went and got some clips with which you will see in a minute this video is, is already getting ridiculously long it's on like 13 and a half minutes it's going to take me about a week to upload with my horrendous virgin internet but what we are going to do is move over into some goals now so if you have enjoyed this video I would really appreciate it if you dropped it a like it does really help me out of course if you are new make sure you hit that subscribe button as well thanks for watching lads if you've got any other suggestions for squads or stuff you'd like to see me build squad builders players to build teams around stuff like that just drop them in the comments and I will get back to you but anyway enjoy the goals lads thanks Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.